Hi, I'm Savannah from Chicago. Please like and subscribe. I never knew my mom because she fell ill soon after I was born, but my dad named me after her. He was a real estate tycoon, and my older twin brothers and I grew up in the lap of luxury. Dad loved us all, but I was his clear favorite. I don't remember him missing a single parent-teacher meeting, recital, birthday, or game practice, no matter how busy he was. And I only had to ask for something once, and he made it happen. Like when I was seven, my favorite cereal company announced that they'd be hiding the Avengers superhero figures in selected boxes, and I wanted to collect the entire team. Not that I couldn't buy action figures from a toy store, I just really wanted the cereal ones. So the next day, Dad had cereal boxes from every store in the city delivered to our mansion, and the entire household spent three days opening them till I had the whole range of figures. I even made it to the local news for that, and I always got my way with my brothers Adam and Jeff, too. Hey, get up! I was sitting in that chair first! When were you sitting here? Yesterday, or maybe on Sunday. It's not important. Just get up, buzz off, and sit somewhere else, loser. I'm warning you, Adam. I'm gonna cry. He ignored me. And then I let out a scream like someone had cut my arm off. Dad came running in a panic, and Adam was grounded before he got two words out of his mouth. My brothers kept trying to get back at me, but they just couldn't win. Once when I was 10, I was playing in our backyard when a scrawny little puppy wandered in and I was immediately in love with it. It turned out that he belonged to one of our maids, and she seemed reluctant to let him go. Dad said he'd get me a better dog, but I threw one of my famous tantrums, and the maid eventually gave in. But later that night, when I took him out for a walk, I found a girl my age crying in the garden. The puppy ran out of my grasp straight to her, and she squealed with delight. Hey, let him go. He's mine. Actually, he's mine. My mom gave him to you because she works for you, and you're a spoiled brat. <sighs> Look, I don't want to cause any trouble for mom, okay? I just came to say goodbye to him. Can I? As the girl hugged her pet, I suddenly had a lump in my throat. I felt like such a jerk. Just taking away something from someone without even thinking just because I could. You can have him back. Your mom won't be in any trouble, I promise but maybe I can play with him sometimes? The maid's daughter and I became friends, and maybe it was her effect on me, but I slowly started seeing that my brothers and I were just too spoiled. I once joked with Dad about wanting a private jet, and he asked me what color I'd like. Dad, I was kidding. I'm 13. Where would I go on a private jet? You really need to learn how to say no sometimes, but he just couldn't, and my brothers took full advantage of it. They failed their classes, <laughs> but they knew Dad would pay the school off to make them pass. They were the heads of all the sports clubs without deserving it, and obviously the most popular guys around because they blew money on wild parties for their friends. Soon after the twins' 18th birthday, Dad decided they needed to learn more about his business, and he wanted me to join in too. But during these meetings, the things I learned just <gasps> shocked me. Now, look at this mansion I sold last month. There was mold in the basement, and the foundation had water damage, but we did a really good job covering it up, and I sold it for four times its real value. Wow, Dad, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you were such a cool cat. What? That's just plain wrong. How could you sell someone a damaged house? And they could sue you. Honey, relax. I've been in the business a long time. They can't prove we knew about this damage already. And don't worry, the insurance will cover it. But it's still dishonest. So? No man can make as much money as I have by being honest all the time. Everyone cuts corners. It's how things are done. And I'm doing all this for you guys. No one asked you to, Dad. You know, you've always been my role model and my favorite person in the world. How could you be so disappointing? That's enough, Savannah. Don't be ungrateful. After that, things were never quite the same between me and Dad. I'd always put him on the highest pedestal, and he'd just fallen so far. It completely changed my relationship with him. And I knew one thing for sure. I wasn't going to be part of the family business. I'd always loved to paint, so I started working harder to build a good portfolio and apply for scholarships to art schools. I knew Dad would pay in the blink of an eye, but I wanted to try doing things on my own. But a few weeks after I started art school, Dad suffered a major heart attack. When he finally came home from the hospital, he gathered my brothers and me into his study and made an announcement. Kids, I'm giving you my business and my wealth. I don't want you to wait longer to inherit everything that's yours. I was stunned, but I could see the greedy excitement in my brother's eyes. Really? So what do we get? Everything. I've made all the arrangements. All I ask is that you enjoy what you've been given to the fullest, and that you let me stay with you throughout the year. I'll split my time among your three homes, wherever you choose to live. This? 
is amazing. And of course you can stay with me, Dad, as long as you want. Thank you, Adam. I leave you control of the company. You have a shrewd mind for business, and you'll do really well. It'll be my honor, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Dad, if he gets the company, what happens to me? Jeff, I know how much you love to travel the world. I leave you half of my material wealth to use as you see fit. Oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. Thank you so much. I worked all my life to provide you with this. Please, enjoy it. We, we sure, sure will. will. My brothers left the room arm in arm, celebrating their new fortune. Why are you doing this, Dad? It's time, Savannah. Which brings me to what I want you to have. I, I don't want anything more from you. Excuse me? I'm thankful for the life you gave me, but I can't stop wishing you done things differently. I don't want your fortune, and I can't be a part of your business. I don't think I could sleep at night knowing I'm scamming people. I just want to do things on my own. Dad looked beyond furious. He just exploded. After all I've done for you, this is how you thank me? Dad, calm down. You'll give yourself another heart attack. As if you care. You look down on me now, huh? And if you want nothing, fine. Get out! Of course I care. Enough. You're a stranger to me now. I have no daughter. Just get out. I walked out that day and began a life on my own. And it was not easy, especially since I'd grown up like a princess. The scholarship paid for my tuition, but I had to work two jobs after school to pay for everything else. I survived, though, and only got stronger. I never heard from my family, but occasionally I'd see my brothers in magazines or on TV, showing up at charity events and flashing their wealth. But I never saw my dad. Slowly, I even started selling my artwork on the side. I hit the jackpot when I was discovered by a renowned painter and she got me my first gallery show. That's where I met a lovely guy named Chase, and it wasn't long before we fell in love. He proposed after I graduated, and I happily said yes. At our engagement party, he asked me to call my family. This is the biggest moment of our lives. They should know. They could have called me any time. Please, Savannah, don't let pride keep you apart. Someone has to be the first to call. Let it be you. Okay, I'll try. That's the best I can do. I called Adam the next day, reaching him at the office. His secretary left me on hold for 20 minutes before he finally picked up. Yeah, what is it? Hello to you too. I'm getting married, Adam. So, why are you telling me? I thought you might want to come. Come on, Savannah. I don't have time for this. Gosh, I knew this was a mistake. You chose your life and walked away. Don't be mad at us now. Is that all? Where's Dad? Who? Are you serious? Where is he? Who knows? He got mad and left. Ask Jeff. I called Jeff and reached him on his private plane. Dad was a real drag. I had to cut him loose. Cut him loose? Let him go. Last I saw him, he was roaming around downtown. What? You mean he's homeless? I don't know. If you want to find him so bad, do it yourself. I was shaking with rage, and I threw the phone across the room and burst into tears. Chase came running in and hugged me. We have to find him, Chase. We need to go now. Find who? My dad. It was pouring rain that night, but I didn't care. We drove through the streets of downtown Chicago, visiting homeless shelters and looking in back alleys, but he was nowhere to be found. <laughs> How could they just let him leave? Is money that important? More important than family? And I should have stayed in touch. You did what you had to do, love. He told you to leave. But don't lose hope yet. We'll look again tomorrow and report him missing to the police. Let's go home now. But when we reached our house, I saw a man slumped near the front door. I jumped out of the car, my heart pounding. Dad? He looked up, so much paler and thinner than I remembered. Savannah, I am so sorry. Chase and I took Dad inside, sat him by the fire, and served him hot soup. When he'd regained some strength, he finally started to talk. Your brothers only wanted my money, Savannah. I tried to advise Adam on a business deal, and he screamed at me, saying it was his company and he didn't want an old man around. Then I went to stay with Jeff, and he said I ruined the vibe. I had nowhere to go. You could have called me. How could I? After the way I treated you, and it's my fault those two have turned out this way, I made them greedy and selfish like me. I was just too ashamed to face you. Until that moment, I had carried so much anger and hurt, but seeing him there, looking so frail, it just melted away. I love you, Dad. You're safe now. You're home. We spent the evening talking. He spent a lot of time with Chase and looking at my art. You made a beautiful life for yourself. Yes, I did. Chase and I converted our spare office into dad's bedroom, and we got to know each other all over again. All these years later, we were family once more. But in the back of my mind, I still had so much resentment toward Adam and Jeff. I couldn't concentrate on my art, and Chase
first noticed that I wasn't being myself. You're gonna see your brothers, aren't you? What are you gonna say? I don't really know. I'm just so angry with them. But I think I have to do this. Then you should, Savannah. And no matter what happens, you'll have a family here waiting for you. The next day, I went to Adam's massive office building. I was prepared to scream at him, hit him, destroy him somehow. But when I walked into his vast office, I found him standing by the window, staring out at the city. His back was hunched, like he was really tired. He turned around, and I was shocked. He looked 10 years older than his age. I have five minutes, Savannah. What do you need? I found Dad. Great job. Is that all? Adam, are you happy? I have no family, no free time. I sleep in the office most nights, trying to do more and more and more. When you reach this level, Savannah, personal happiness is irrelevant. It's all about the next deal. Why do you do it? What other choice do I have? What else is there? You have one last chance to set things right, Adam. You can choose to take it. I set a wedding invitation on his desk and left. In the afternoon, I stopped by Jeff's million dollar apartment. There was nothing warm or homey about it. It just looked like a cold hotel room. He was sitting on a white couch, staring at the ceiling. I'm leaving for Europe in the morning. What are you doing this time? How many parties can you go to? How many vacations are enough? Nobody's really my friend. They just like me for the trips, for the yacht parties, for the money. I just want something meaningful. You have one last chance to have that, Jeff. Think about it. And I left a wedding invitation on the edge of the couch. A month later, Chase and I were married in a beautiful garden venue on a gorgeous spring day. But that's not the most important part. The most important part was that my brothers apologized to me and begged for dad's forgiveness. And now, my father was walking me down the aisle on my wedding day, and my brothers were smiling at me from the front row.